ums and so and all the little things that you add in when you're speaking. So you still have the correct grammar, but you can have like cut off sentences. Just just sets another way to think about it is that you could just pretend like you're talking to a friend. And this is how I would explain to Cherie what I did when I was at the financial company. And then maybe fix it up a little bit. But that's going to attract people to read your profile more. And then, of course, I've talked about this before, make sure all of those keywords are in your description. So for me, business growth and marketing and finance. So I, and make sure they're in the first, first line if you can. But that way, um, Google can find you based on those. And people searching LinkedIn can find you. Ask yeah. a question at this point because I'm, I'm uh, sitting here thinking about my coaching business mm -hmm. and my uh, PCOA for all business, which are two separate, unrelated activities. Mm -hmm. Does that imply I should have two LinkedIn sites or merge merge them both? Because well, if I list my skills and expertise, it's going to be very different for the two areas. One is. Here's my, we might each have a different answer, but my answer is <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that you need to make sure the PCOA for all, or the new business name, has a company site. A company oh, site? Yes. Not and you need to be connected to it, but your site is you. I see. So you need to list what, both things that you're doing, and you need to combine them. Okay. And now if you want to emphasize one over the other, you can do that. You know, you can put PCOA for all as first. the first answer, mm -hmm. and coaching then your second. coaching as the second, mm -hmm. or vice versa. Right. But I really think that the business, the company area of LinkedIn will be more uh, productive right. for your company. Right. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I would completely agree with that. Um, you, you're going, it's a job description, so fill Correct. it out completely mm -hmm. for and have it all. And then put, the, <laughs> put it in the order you would like it to be in. But they'll hit on make sure that if at all possible you have a david at pcoaforall.com or whatever that is, so that you can create a business persona right. for that company, okay. uh, as well as for your consulting company. Right. Sharif, what do you think? Uh, I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm actually in the same boat because I have two different mm -hmm. uh, careers or two different professionals. Yeah. Uh, so uh, LinkedIn is my is my is who I am. Uh, for a company that has its own pages, like LinkedIn is who I am. What I, what I so you emphasize the connections more, right? Um, you know, I'm, um, I don't know. It's, okay. it's kind of in, in between because I have, you know, people on both sides mm -hmm. on, on LinkedIn connected. So, um. Well, I have two companies and I emphasize Smart Group because my other company, LinkedIn, is not important, as important for my other company. It's a uh, B2C, business to consumers, and I don't think people are going to be on LinkedIn looking for apparel. So that's, but I do have that as part of my experience. People can see that I've built a website and I've, I've done all these. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't personally build it. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's your read? Another little tip is when you get a new connection, which is should be all the time, write them a little personal note. Very short. I could just have one this morning, and all I wrote was, uh, thanks for connecting. Uh, I'm looking forward to... Um, well, I'm thinking about the Facebook one I just did, where then I asked them a question about their picture to engage them. So that was on Facebook. It's really the same principle on LinkedIn that you want to you want to send a little note. I have so many people that are connecting with me now that I really don't know personally, and so I try to just add a little personal touch when I write back. But I just started doing that this week, so we'll see how that goes. The conversational language I have a. A link and I will share these these uh, slides this is a great link that tells you like in ten different steps how to make sure you're writing conversationally so I won't go into the details but I thought it was a great resource um, make sure you refresh your profile on an ongoing basis we've hit on this in previous smart group meetings every time you make a change on your profile it goes out in that little that little announcement to everybody so that they see your name again and I have to say that when I look I always look at those because I'm curious about you know, changes in people's lives, and I almost always see something interesting, and then or somebody that I've totally forgotten about. Oh, I should be in touch with that person. 
for whatever reason. Um, I already went over when we were on my LinkedIn, that tag connection feature that will help you down the road. Tell me with the evaluation if you want a more detailed presentation on that because it's really, it's a little more than we can have time to go in for right now. So on to one of the really, what I think LinkedIn is best known for is the job search. And so that, when you look at your, the top thing, the top bar on your LinkedIn profile and you see jobs there, you know, I'm not looking for a job and I haven't been looking to hire somebody who's professional uh, recently, so I, I've never, I haven't been going on there. But I just started going on there because I have a reason, I, have, I know somebody who's close to me that's looking for a job. So I thought, I really want to be up to speed to advise him on how to use this feature. So I, I think I've really gotten pretty much up, up to speed on that. I thought, it, even though you may not want to use that feature today, it's a good thing for you to know about. And so I hope that you don't mind if I tell you, does anybody not want to hear about this? Or? <laughs> okay. Um, number one, we always start off with that you set your, your job, your profile has to be 100%. So make sure that I've handed out a few of your profiles and I've made, uh, at 1 o'clock when we have our lab, we can go over some more things, but we'll make specific recommendations on what you need to do to get to 100%. Um, the thing to do, not job seekers. This is a summary. <laughs> Next is job seekers. Um, I already talked about key search terms in your profile and making sure that uh, you've got the right information right by your name. Includes One thing I didn't cover is include samples of your work. There's a PDF of your resume. Print it out and look at it because that's what people are going to go to and print out. So make sure it's correct. And the thing I didn't cover was get recommendations. The way to do it is to give recommendations. That's the best way to give to do it. You can ask for them if you feel comfortable. But um, what I'm going to recommend at the end is that you make a recommendation once a week. And usually they turn around and give you a recommendation. So that's very important. So to go on to about job openings, you go to the job section at the top and you put in the relevant terms that you're looking for. So I have um, a soon-to-be relative and he is a journalist from Canada, and he lives in the Washington, D.C. area. So he's looking for a job, either writing or investigative journalism. Uh, so these are the terms that I advised him to go look at one by one. <laughs> journalism, social, um, social uh, media, um, media writing, I told him. What are some other ones that he would look for? Investigative reporting. Now, to find a job doing investigative reporting is extremely difficult in this day and age because print media is not doing too well. So you put in those terms, and then you narrow your results by going to geography. So you go over to that left-hand side that we went over last week, and um, you click, you put on U.S., see how many there are. Then you go down, you add the city, Washington, D.C. area and you see how many they are for each of those search terms. You click on the actual jobs, and then you see what the particulars are and if they're anything relevant. Really, it, really cool about this is that you can look to the right, and on the right-hand side is a, um, all, all similar jobs that are available, and then there's also a section that shows you who else has already applied for that job. So that's who you're in competition with. But that's a lot of information that you can get. And then here's where LinkedIn is really making, starting to make some money, and that's why the stockholders are, are liking it. They've got upgrades. So you could pay, if you're a job seeker, you go under the job section, and you go to job seeker, and there's different plans you can buy, but you can pay $29.95 um, a, a month to search salaries and to, for LinkedIn to promote you. So I think that's a pretty good deal if you're looking for a job. Um, if you sign up for a whole year prepaid, it gets down to $25 a month. But you can try, the, this is what I told um, Brett, try the free first and then upgrade after that. Because you know, his is so particular and his geographic area is so particular that he could really use that help. Now if you're a job recruiter, same thing, but your company profile has to be up to speed, which I didn't go over, but it's, we can do that another time if you like. 